Well guys, it looks like I was wrong. Apparently according to a new study, low carb is better than all the other diets out there. Apparently it's the best thing since sliced bread or butter. I'm just kidding. There is a new study out and we're gonna break it down and talk about why it doesn't really live up to the hype. Let's get into it. Okay, let me just go check that real quick. God dang it, Mom. Are you there? Yeah, hey, uh, I'm filming. Can I give you a call back? I just have one question about the AT&T. I just went in there and said there's a plan where it's $10 a month. No, no, it's not, it's, it's not $10 a month. It's $10 per day that you're overseas that you use it. Okay, but why, why, did, why was I supposed to get that? Well, because it'll keep you from having a $500 phone bill. Okay, but I, only if I make a phone call. It, or you, or use the, charged. or use the internet. Okay, it's it's okay. it's so. Okay, I'll just go in and tell her. It's the international traveler. It's it's if you're hooked up to Wi-Fi, if you put your if you put your phone on airplane mode and hook it up to Wi-Fi, you will not be uh -huh. you will not be charged. But if you okay. want to use the network for internet, or you want to make a phone call using the network, or anytime you want to use the network, so if you're not attached to Wi-Fi and you need to do something, um, then it will activate it and you'll get charged ten dollars for that day. Okay. But right. it only charges you the days that you use it. Okay. Okay? All right. Okay. All right. All right. Bye, Mom. Bye. Mom! The fucking meatloaf! <laughs> All right, guys. So there's a lot to unpack in this study. It's going to be pretty technical, but let's break it down. This study was uh, done by David Ludwig, who is one of the, he's at Harvard and one of the original kind of promoters or hypothesizers of the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity. This study was funded by NUSI, which is an organization that I believe is run by Gary Taubes, who's a staunch low carbohydrate advocate. That's the, the bias right off the bat. Now that by itself does not dismiss this study. Okay, I wanna be very clear. Everyone has bias, everyone. We all have our own opinions. That's okay. So, but that is the bias going in. In this study, they wanted to examine what happens uh, when they change the ratio of carbohydrate to fat in a post-diet setting on uh, maintaining body weight and energy expenditure. They had dieters lose about 12% of their body weight uh, on a run-in diet, which was 45% carbohydrate, I believe. Interesting. Uh, then they had them uh, go to maintenance over the course of a few weeks using three different diets with different levels of dietary carbohydrate either 60, 40, or 20% carbohydrate. And they had to maintain within two kil kilograms of their, of what they ended the diet at. So they wanted to see, okay, uh, which diet, if any, had a bigger impact on metabolic rate and energy expenditure. And they used a technique called doubly labeled water, which is actually very accurate for estimating uh, changes in energy expenditure. And they found that there was a greater uh, total energy expenditure with the low carbohydrate diet. I think it was something around uh, with the 20% uh, carb diet, it was something like uh, 200 or 250 calories per day greater than the 60%. And this equated to about a 50 cal uh, per 10% reduction in dietary carbohydrate. So basically, Every time you drop your dietary carbohydrate by 10%, uh, your metabolic rate went up by 50 calories a day. This is in uh, congruence with the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity where insulin suppresses metabolic rate. There are a few problems with this study, but we're gonna break it down one by one. But again, they use very accurate measurements, very advanced techniques. But we're gonna explain why the way they analyzed it was probably inappropriate. Uh oh. Okay. 
and Lane just kills everything. And there's shit on the other side of the wipe off board. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> All natty, folks. All natty. So let's talk about why I think some of their measurements were a little bit inappropriate. When we talk about this doubly labeled water method, very precise measurement of energy expenditure, um, but it is a steady state measurement. And the post diet setting is not a steady state. I want you to keep that in mind, that if you're, you're adding calories in, you're starting to change the equilibrium, it's not a steady state. From 2000 to 2000, 2014 to 2016, they, this uh, group of authors, their methods and proposals indicated that they would be doing their uh, total daily energy expenditure comparisons against the pre-weight loss weight and, do and data. In 2017, uh, they, got, they had a lot of their data back. They unblinded it. And then they made an amendment to their protocols where they were going to measure, take the measurements to make, or take the comparison measurements for total energy expenditure using the post weight loss data, non steady state using a steady state measure. Okay. Now for a lot of science, non science geeks out there, you're going to go, why the hell does that make a difference? Well, it makes a difference because it introduces a lot of, um, it can introduce data artifacts. And there was actually uh, a group of researchers who took the data from this experiment and reran it using the researcher's original proposed protocol to use the pre-weight loss data as the comparison, which is what, again, the researchers themselves proposed until they saw their data in 2017 and got unblinded and made an amendment. This is what they had used. This is what is the standard as well. And they reran, uh, it was Kevin Hall and uh, another, a couple other researchers. They reran the data and found that there was absolutely no difference between the diets on energy expenditure when they used the original proposal. Now, what I am not doing is accusing these researchers of uh, trying to fraudulently uh, alter their data or anything like that. Um, I can't speak to their motivations. All I know is, uh, I think it was in seven of eight studies, they had it a certain way, then they changed it for this one particular study. So again, once they, if you use the original data that they proposed, the original way to measure this, this doubly labeled water, the original comparisons, there's no difference. Additionally, the significant uh, uh, daily energy expenditure effect uh, modification by baseline insulin disappeared. So basically they also had a statistic in the study showing that uh, the energy expenditure could be explained quite a bit by differences in insulin secretion and that difference went away. No significant difference. So again, this is very technical, and some of you may sit there and say, well, one researcher says this, one researcher says that. Again, I'm telling you, when they ran it, using their original, their own researchers' original proposed methods, there was no difference in energy expenditure. Finally, um, let's assume that this is correct. Let's assume this data is not artifacts, that there actually is a difference, okay? That these researchers observed a difference. There's also 27 other studies out there, other controlled feeding studies. Stephen Goyanet brought this up. 27 other controlled feeding studies looking at ratios of carbohydrate to fat and examining total energy expenditure. What do those 28 total studies find? What is the consensus of the data? In 20 of those 28 studies, they actually have found favoritism towards low fat, meaning that the higher carb ratio actually had 
a higher rate of energy expenditure compared to low carb. I'll say it again. In 20 of 28 studies, low fat, higher carb was actually favored for increasing energy expenditure. When you weight the studies as a whole, there's basically no difference. There's a 26 calorie per day uh, advantage based on all the studies weighted together. There's a 26 calorie per day advantage towards low fat, higher carb. That's not really a meaningful difference. So even if this was correct, you have to take it with the complete consensus of the overall data that we have, which seems to suggest that when you control calories and you control protein, the ratio of carbohydrate to fat does not matter for fat loss. Now, if you personally feel better on a low carb diet, you are more satiated, you feel better, more maintainable for your lifestyle, then by all means do that. We are not saying that low carbohydrate doesn't have a place. What we are saying, myself and the other researchers, is that it doesn't appear to be magic. And it is not the results of examining the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity. It just does not live up to the hype. It's very likely that it's wrong. Now, it doesn't mean that insulin has no impact on all this stuff. It may have a small impact, but when calories are equated, it's still calories is the strongest driver. Protein can make a difference, fiber can make a difference, carbs to fats don't really seem to make a difference. Now, one other thing I wanna, I wanna go over real quick. Even if all this is correct, like I said, this is not a weight loss study. This is a weight maintenance study. The authors go on to tenuously propose that the difference in energy expenditure could explain up to a 10 kilogram weight loss per year. But that's not what you tested, Dr. Ludwig. That's not what you tested. What you tested was weight maintenance. So if this study, let's assume, let's just take out these other 27 studies and assume this is the only one and it's completely correct and that the analysis was not done incorrectly. Let's assume it's completely correct. It's not saying anything about weight loss. What it's saying is that maybe you can eat more on a lower carb diet to maintain your weight than you could on a higher carb diet. That's what it says. Because when we look at the weight loss studies, the I think 32 weight loss studies where protein and calories are equated and you vary the ratio of carbohydrate to fat, there's basically no difference in weight loss. And if anything, low fat is actually favored for weight loss. This is not a weight loss study. You cannot use the results to make possible conclusions about weight loss. That's not the way research works. They allowed for a two kilogram variance in weight as maintenance. We know that a ketogenic diet, and this has been documented previously, causes an initial loss of lean body mass and body water. Most lean body mass losses is, is body water. It is possible that you have a loss of water and thus lose some weight when you switch from that 45% carbohydrate diet to a 20% carbohydrate diet or a lower carb diet, a loss of some water, and they didn't measure body composition by the way, you have a loss of some water, that would indicate since they lost some weight that they're not at maintenance and they need more calories and thus you'd have to overfeed them more. That is another possible error that could be introduced here is the artificial increase in calories or, thermic, or, or total daily energy expenditure that's actually not from a loss of fat, but rather a loss of water. Now, I don't know if that's the case, but we've seen it in other studies. Overall, what do I think? I don't think it's a bad study, and I don't think it needs to be summarily dismissed. If you ask me for my opinion, I think it's, they have provided very weak reasoning as to why they changed their analysis to use the post weight loss data as the comparison data versus pre weight loss, which is the gold standard and what they had done in their proposal and other studies. I think we'll go back to what I've said before. I think low carbohydrate is a tool and what it's going to boil down to what is best for weight loss maintenance 
is what you can sustain. The diet you can stick to is probably best for you, okay? Maybe we need to study uh, overfeeding with a ketogenic diet or low carb diets more. Maybe there is something there. But I don't think that this study is strong evidence of that. And I also probably don't think I'm gonna change anybody who is a really huge fan of low carb uh, because people who are zealots for low carb, I have found to be kind of like religious zealots, not all that different. Uh, and they don't really tend to care about data that contradicts their hypothesis. In fact, they're very fond of pointing out uh, funding sources. When this was funded by, hello, the biggest, or at least I'm, what I know of, the biggest low carb <laughs> funding source there is. Again, none of this by itself makes this study wrong. I think it's useful data. I just don't think this data is compelling to show that low carb has much advantage, if any, to low fat on energy expenditure. All right, guys, if you liked the video, like it, subscribe. If you hated the video, tell me in the comments how much you hate me. And oh, by the way, our audio's on fleek, so I don't want to hear no more shit.